I'm back! It is great to be back, folks. I'm Skull Kamen, and I apologize for the long wait. So, you may be wondering, Skull, what's with the new threads? And where have you been? Well... And that's how I saved Christmas. But hey, who cares? What's on the docket for today? Ah! Oh, right. What's this list about? Alright, Garantina, let's try our hardest to win. I trust your judgment, and I hope we shall win as well. Okay, Sunflora, let's do this. Yes, and once we win, we shall bathe the blood of our enemies as we watch them suffer. <laughs> uh, are you okay over there? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was just coughing. I'm ready. <laughs> so apparently it's bad acting. Okay, cool. Alright, so out of the gate, I have issues with this little skit. Oh boy, presentation issues. That's a real strong point for me to start this commentary off. Yay! Way to turn the new look, Skull. But anyway, why would Faulkner, the flying-type gin leader of Johto, be using a Giratina? Out of all the sprites that you could have chosen, why would you go with him? Hell, if we want to go with just Generation 4 sprites, wouldn't Morty, the ghost-type gym leader, or Lance, the dragging leaf form member, be a better choice? Secondly, what kind of excuse do you have? You couldn't be bothered to even throw your voice to an attempt to change it up for the characters? I mean, there's not even an excuse here. You could have had your guest be a voice for the characters on the skit. It certainly would actually make this feel a lot more like a co-op than actually just being like you two are sterilizing each other. Glad to see in a year or so since I've covered a Poketuber, that trend hasn't even changed. And it don't matter. None of this matters. What is going on guys? This is Dobbs here bringing you another Pokemon video. And in this video, we're gonna go over 10 of the most evil Pokemon to ever exist. And you're probably wondering why I'm saying we. That's because we have a very special guest for this video. Allow me to introduce Chikiwi. Hello, hello, this is Tricky. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And don't forget to check out our collab on Shelby's channel after this. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. I hope you all enjoy that since that's practically the only time the two actually interact in the video. And no, I didn't skip anything. There are no credentials as to what is or isn't an evil Pokemon. I mean, the concept of evil is a highly divisive topic. No one thinks that they're the villain of their own story. I mean, let me give an example. How about Darkrai from the Pokemon movies? You know, where he was hounded to be the bad guy throughout most of his movie in Alamos Town, even though he was trying to warn you about Dialga and Palkia? There is another issue, but I want to address him when it comes up real soon. Point is, when it comes to these sorts of things, you can't just expect people to take evil as black and white. <laughs> Get it? Black and white? And it's about Pokemon it. <laughs> Okie dokie, let's go ahead and get started. Yesterday. Let's get started. Well, that was completely redundant. Take at number 10, we have Malamar. This creepy dark psychic Pokemon definitely deserves a spot on this list because it's absolutely psycho and will stop at nothing to make your life miserable. Let's look at lovely Malamar's Pokedex entries. It wields the most compelling hypnotic powers of any Pokemon. It forces others to do whatever it wants. It lures prey close with hypnotic motions, then wraps its tentacles around it before killing it with digestive fluids. Well, that's lovely. It takes over your mind and then it melts you. When it comes to strong hypnosis, there's an endless number of people who utilize Malamar for their nefarious deeds. With that in mind, who's to say that Malamar doesn't use its hypnotic powers in the defensive matter to protect itself from people who want to use Malamar or predators who want to eat it? Which leads into the second problem. It needs to eat. Yes, you can say the way that Malamar eats its food is less than satisfying to think about, but that shouldn't really be a factor as to why it should be evil. After all, in the real world, there are creatures that do pretty much the same thing. There's nothing really inherently evil about a creature eats its prey. Otherwise, then everyone who eats meat would be considered evil. And I wouldn't make this much of a problem, except Tricky says this later in the video. I know that there's a lot of carnivorous Pokemon, and just like real animals, there is a food chain. Yay! 
Oh, but this leads into the problem that I alluded to earlier. In the Island of the Giant Pokemon episode in the original anime, it is mentioned that no Pokemon is actually evil, and that the villains Pokemon do evil things because their trainer does evil things. Well, Malamar don't give a crap about any of that. In episode 19 of the X and Y anime, a psychopathic Malamar devises a plan to manipulate all humans and literally tries to conquer the world. It kidnaps an officer Jenny and forces her to pretty much be its slave. Then it hypnotizes pretty much every everyone in the episode so they can work towards its harmful plan to overthrow humanity. What a nice squid thing. They have no human influence, they just want to manipulate, hurt, and rule over everything. You can just look at its face and tail. This thing is mean. So, are you referring to just the specific Malamar from the anime, or Malamar in general? You see, if it was just the specific Malamar, then I wouldn't be bringing this up as an issue. But you're painting the entire species as evil and malevolent. Since, hey, generalizing is fun, I guess! Obviously not all Malamar are evil, but you're kind of making it out to be. Oh, and if you actually want something to bolster your case... Three. There are three evil Malamar that appear in the anime. They appear in the episode facing the grand design. However, I can also use that episode to prove my point as well, since there were several Malamar that weren't being evil jerks and... Uh... <laughs> Yes, look at the evil Malamar gathering food for Pokemon and being friendly, truly the pinnacle of evil. EVIL! Like I said, this wouldn't be an issue if you just said it was the specific Malamar, and not just Malamar in general. Well, Malamar don't give a crap about any of that. It Striking in at number 9, we have Houndoom. Now, what's the top 10 most evil Pokemon list without including the Pokemon that pretty much started it all? I mean, we had Pokemon like Ninetales who could curse you for 1000 years, or even like Electrode, who would just simply explode at your face. But it wasn't until Generation 2 when Houndoom came along and really spooed the evil thing. Your examples are trash. With your first example, Ninetales would curse you when you grabbed its tails, meaning you're provoking it. Hell, if you grab any animal by the tail without warning most of the time, they will react negatively. Especially if we follow the trend of using the Pokedex in Pokemon Silver's Pokedex entry, it needs its tails since they're what supposedly keep it alive for thousands of years. Frankly, I'd be a little bit mad if you were messing with the one thing that was keeping me alive too. Now, I say supposedly because, as a lot of people already know and as I've stated earlier, you can't really trust the Pokedex because there's a lot of conflicting data in it. A prime example would be Electrode. It explodes when it's bored. It explodes because there's too much electricity in it. So it leads me to believe that you can't really trust the Pokedex because there are several different reasons for why an Electrode would explode. And if you didn't know, the dark typing in the Japanese games is actually called the evil type. So Game Freak basically declared all these Pokemon in Generation 2 as evil. No, 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 no! That's not a declaration of them being evil. Heck, it seems that over the years that, and even in the original generation that they came out of, Game Freak is going for more of the dark type feature. Heck, you need only look at towards Umbreon. It's called the Moonlight Pokemon, as it's just called Blackie in Japanese. That alone denotes that it's referring more to darkness and not evil. If we go past Generation 2, Absol is a prime example of being labeled this in the games, since it's actually a warning symbol for disasters. Of course, that's more Pokedex and anime, so take that out with a of salt. The point is, generalizing is fun and you shouldn't really be doing that. Otherwise, I should expect every other Pokemon on this list to be dark type. Now, what makes Houndoom so malicious is due to his natural behavior and his treacherous abilities. According to his Pokedex entry, Houndoom has the ability to spit out flames that will never burn out and will remain painful until the victim dies. Excuse me? Where in the world does it say that? That the flames are never gonna go out? I've never seen anything like that in the Pokedex. So where are you getting that from is really weird. In addition, as for the burn, yeah, I doubt that. When the game's mechanics, like a burn heal or that actually does heal burns exists, it actually makes it so your Pokemon isn't in pain anymore. I doubt the burn lasts forever if it can be healed. See, some folks want to argue that the burn heal is man-made and that it doesn't necessarily contradict the Pokedex entry because it might be talking about how Pokemon in the wild may be stuck with an ever-painful burn. Two words. Rostberry. When a Pokemon can just find one, eat it, and the burn is cured, that Pokedex entry doesn't have much of a leg to stand on anymore, does it? On top of that, Houndoom's overall design just screams evil. Like, for example, its tail is reminiscent of a demon's and its scaly bones represent death. Not to mention that its Generation 2 sprite just looks downright evil. Hey, you know, that subjective was all hell, and I realize this is a biased top 10 list, 
Maybe. But by that logic, I'm evil since I hold a lot of design elements that are similar to Houndoom. Seriously, red, black, white, I have bony to structure designs, I have fire as an element. Evil. Or how about heroes that have a wicked design to them? I mean, there's Batman, Spawn, they're prime examples. They got bleak and dark designs, yet they're all good guys. I mean, it's kind of shell to base a Pokemon based on its looks to be evil. In addition, the sprites make it look evil? Uh, breathing fire and about ready to bark. Okay. Also, if you did want a reason to actually bolster your strength, you could have easily brought up the fact that it was based off a Hellhound. So it's safe to say that Houndoom is a Pokemon that you wouldn't want to mess with, but he's only number 9. So let's get on with the video. Actually, here's something interesting. You're not gonna bring up any anime references to Houndoom. I understand why you wouldn't, since Houndoom's debut in the anime was this. I mean, this was an issue with the Malamar portion, that there are examples that prove you wrong about these Pokemon are evil, and you being selective about this. Now granted, it's a lot more worse in the Malamar segment than here, but there's a bigger issue. Why is Houndoom higher than Malamar? Especially when there's a Malamar that's proven to be evil! Even more than what you brought up with Houndoom, most of which is being traits of the Pokemon that can't actually be helped if you do believe in the Pokedex. It can't help if its flame could ever be healed, it can't help if its appearance, things that are out of its control! So please, Tell me how something that may not be intentionally evil is more evil than the Pokemon that manipulated people and tried to take over the world! 